We have a lot of people throwing up and a lot of people shuddering. But the thing that really surprises me is people faint. I mean, I have never in my life known a movie where people would faint. Just turn his head around. <laughs> it is. I ain't never took my coat and put it my face like that. I fainted like 10 minutes after the first beginning of the movie. I passed out. In, in about the first half hour, yeah. yeah. My legs are just going, Nyeh. and I want to go in the lobby and not watch it, and I have to cover my ears. <laughs> it just scared me to death. Things just like this, just, it just scared, really scared me to death. Oh. oh, God, I can't believe it. Upon its release, The Exorcist was called the scariest movie of all time, and it retained this title for many years. Today, over 50 years later, the movie is still appreciated and remembered as one of the greatest horror films ever made. Its practical effects remain impressive, and the filmmaking on display from William Friedkin is nothing short of masterful. However, the sequences that inspired such horror in audiences in 1973 are unlikely to entice similar reactions in 2024. It would be easy to pin this on The Exorcist simply having aged. After all, a modern audience might just shrug and say that they've seen scarier. However, I struggle to think of even a contemporary horror movie that instills fear on this level in a modern audience. <laughs> Bad, bad. So where did these reactions go, and how does The Exorcist still terrify audiences if its shocking imagery is no longer shocking? I think a good place to start is the legend behind the 1896 premiere of the Lumiere Brothers film Arrival of a Train. This film only runs for 50 seconds and consists of a single locked off shot of a train arriving at a train station, but it was alleged to have caused panic with some people even jumping out of their seats and fleeing the theater, thinking the train would crash through the screen. While the legitimacy of these rumors is heavily debated, the reaction speaks to the audience's relationship with cinema at the time. This was because images like this had never been put to screen before. Audiences didn't know how to process seeing life recorded and played back to them. And I think something very similar is going on with these reactions to The Exorcist in 1973. Audiences today have just become much more accustomed to seeing scary imagery in horror movies. This had lots of scary faces. <laughs> It had the appropriate amount of jump scares and terrifying faces. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't remember a lot of jump scares. I just remember falling asleep. A good point of reference for how much horror has come to depend on scary faces is comparing the portrayal of Pennywise the Clown in the 1990 IT miniseries to the version from the 2017 remake. While Andy Muschietti's adaptation is certainly good, I can't shake the feeling that Tim Curry's Pennywise from the miniseries is slightly more effective. I think the reason I feel this way is because Pennywise in the miniseries is depicted for the most part as just a regular clown. Skarsgård's version is a lot more monstrous. The original adaptation understood that the horror of Pennywise is derived from the fact that this person who is pretending to be someone friendly to children is actually a threat to them and uses his perceived friendliness to lure them into his trap. The depiction of Pennywise in the remake is a lot more inherently terrifying, but it's a lot less plausible that any child would fall for his trap. You're not my friend, you're scary. Don't get me wrong, there's lots of great horror movies that derive terror from using creative and unique imagery. But it's important that the imagery is always remaining in service of the narrative, and not supplanting it as the source of the movie's terror. We don't care about the disturbance. Pounding, the flash, the screaming, the music. I just want you to find our little girl. So, why is The Exorcist still terrifying today, even when its most shocking imagery is no longer effective? The film is structured around a few key scenes which lean into this disturbing imagery, but Freakin understands that the most terrifying aspect of Reagan's possession isn't just the visual horror but the situation in which it places the people in her life, and the toll it takes on the characters. Sure, the frightening imagery shocked audiences in 1973, but what really gives the film lasting power is the real-world consequences of the possession, the sense of helplessness that consumes Chris McNeil as a mother, watching her daughter suffering. Because I have a little girl, and it was like watching my little girl. 
and the crisis of faith that torments Father Karras as he comes face to face with the demon. The audience can put themselves in the shoes of these characters, and the film maintains its terror, but not in the supernatural moments, but those in which Reagan undergoes brutal medical procedures, as her mother is forced to witness the clinical cold attempts to diagnose something beyond medicine's reach. This is grounded in something closer to reality, and forces the audience to imagine how they'd feel in these moments. Even the demon in The Exorcist understands that these physical tricks, the telekinesis, body contortions, and scary voices, are all just distractions meant to weaken the mind of those around Reagan. It's implicit in the film that the demon can leave the bed whenever it chooses, so all of this chaos is superficial. It's the psychological impact on the characters, how the demon manipulates and destroys their lives, that is truly terrifying. The Exorcist remains a horror classic, because it understands that shocking imagery alone is not enough to truly terrify an audience. It has the ability to create a deep sense of dread, and pull on the audience's human vulnerability, helplessness, faith, and existential fear. And this is why it continues to be endlessly unsettling to this day.